Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Chris. And today we continue our series talking about Mind GPT and explaining how we're building a custom large language model to answer mental health questions. We're using two data sets on this project. One comes from NHS mental health data and the other comes from Mind, which is a UK mental health charity. In today's video, we're going to talk about vector databases, which are an essential component in deploying large language models into production. Before we talk about vector databases though, we need to talk about the different kinds of approaches that there are to creating customized large language models, because we've got in-context learning on the one hand, and we have fine tuning on the other hand. So Chris, can you explain to us the difference between these two approaches? Yeah, so effectively they both use a pre-trained base model, which would be an open source model in our case. With fine tuning, we take the data, pass it through the model, and update the model itself. On the other hand, in context means we provide context to our prompt, in this case, documents, which would provide context to a question where the model can extract key pieces of information to support the answer. So in our case, we are using in-context learning. And can you say a little bit about, from an engineering standpoint, what things we need to be thinking about to implement in-context learning? Yeah, so large language models have a limited capacity of how many words we can put into them. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we only have the relevant context. This is done by splitting up our documents, in, a, in this case, the MIND or NHS website into sections. Mm -hmm. And with these sections, we embed them, which means we produce a vector representation. And with these representations, we can effectively see which documents are semantically similar. Okay, sure, I understand. So if maybe if I'm asking a simple question like, what is depression? then the system is going to use the embedding to find the documents that are related to that question, right? Yeah, so we'd also embed the question itself, which gives a representation of the question. And then within this space, we can see which are the closest vectors, therefore documents that we want to retrieve to add as context to be put into the model. Okay, cool, that makes sense. And that brings us to vector databases. So what actually is a vector database? So a vector database is, as it sounds, a database for vectors. Effectively, it's an optimized way of storing vector and data pairs. So we have a piece of data which is indexed by a vector. They also provide optimized ways for retrieval and insertion. In our case, we're using Chroma, which is an open source vector database. And I'll say a little bit about how we're deploying that as well. So Chroma is deployed to Kubernetes, and we also have a model which sits alongside that. The model is deployed on Selma, which sits on top of Kubernetes. To connect all of these pieces together, then we have a web application. So the web application takes the questions from the user. It first goes to the vector database to retrieve the relevant documents, and then it goes to the model to make the query to, to ask the question. You can read the full details of how this works on Chris's blog, which will be linked in the comments. And as always, you can follow along with our progress on GitHub. So for now, thanks for listening, and we'll see you again in the next one. What do you think? Was that anything okay. you want to retake? I think that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So we're just staring at the camera, looking excited for the thumbnail. Hope that's good enough. Let's see. Oh, dear.